Hi, I'm Maria Theohara Solvelo Sos on social media. Welcome back to Sober 50 Podcast on Soul Organized Style. Grab a cuppa and relax with us. On Soul Organized Style Podcast, I begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we record this podcast and pay respects to the elders past and present. Thanks for joining us on Sober 50 Podcast on Soul Organized Style. Sober 50 intersects with all communities. We're a community that is so over ageism. It's 2023, and I want to give a special shout out to the Patreon supporters of this podcast and say thank you for supporting this podcast for over 12 months, two years for many of you. Your support of this podcast means everything to me, and that's why I keep doing it. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. TJ Lee, or at TJ Lee on Instagram, is today's Sober 50 podcast guest. Thank you for inviting me into your home today, TJ. How are you doing? You're welcome. So that listeners get a little bit more of an understanding about TJ's background, you can find a couple of interviews, video interviews on YouTube on Just Kidding News that you did in 2022. That, yeah, that was, that was really fun. Yeah. You've got a great group of friends there. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm one of them, Ryan, I've known since high school and the others just met throughout my years in the era of Asian YouTube, which was really big in Southern California. And so a lot of the same people just got to know each other, especially with the dancing background or my friends that are in the dance scene. And just in that time was just a big deal. They're a really great group of friends. Can you tell us more about your background, TJ? Okay. Yeah. So I am born and raised in Los Angeles. I grew up in a city called Montebello just east of Los Angeles. My disability was acquired when I was 18, but uh, even before that, I was always like the odd one out in my area because I was the only Asian in the area. So just kind of always a little different from the start. So like now after with the disability, just kind of still stand out, but blending in. And I think the fashion and style is always the way to kind of, you know, try to be as, you know, quote unquote, normal as possible. But as I grew older, it was about, you know, just trying to being myself to the fullest and lately just doing that. And my style in general was expressing myself on how it is. And a lot of my style is very like kind of like SoCal, Southern California skater, just relaxed vibes. Yep. I'm not a very like suit type of person, which I really wanted to be, especially with the disability was very, it was just very stuffy and that just wasn't me. So I just went back to what I wore growing up was a lot of just you know a lot of casual a lot of functional wear with work wear and that was like those things where it just built tough and finding good pieces to last a long time that's my thing lately even I don't even really buy clothes as much anymore it's just very like I just built bought really tough wear and just cycling especially with fashion is it goes into the cycle (laughs) yeah it does thank you for just describing a little bit more about you and about your style because how I found you was through Lynn and Alex of Sewn Adaptive. And so that really makes sense that this is a sewing podcast and you've been able to find two really great people that can help adapt your clothing to suit your needs. Oh, yeah. So for Lynn and Alex from Sewn Adaptive, actually, I just met them this year doing their runway dreams in LA. And I've been an adaptive model since 2019 when Runway Dreams did the first one in Las Vegas. And that was out of like a fluke as well, too. They're just looking for people with disabilities. And I just saw it as an opportunity. And it looked fun. So let's do it. I asked them and I got chosen. And I actually told my girlfriend, I was like, hey, like, I'm going to be a model. I got in Vegas. And it was just kind of like, what? I was like, yeah, they're looking for people with disabilities. I'm going to try it. And since then, I just met a, a good group of people within the community. You know, it's about fashion and style. And that's where I regained my love for style and fashion and my own style. And did stuff with the gamut, uh, Zappos Adaptive, and kind of just going on these campaigns. And it's always uh, these companies had to make stuff for us. These uh, photo shoots, I would see seamstresses, but they weren't in that space. They were just hired to make stuff right at the show or something. But this year was different with Lynn and Alex, where Alex wanted to help. He had all this information that to make the changes and he, his background is, is in textiles too for a long time. And he just loved doing it. And then it was so quick after that first show earlier this year till now, they have an open shop. They've been collaborating with a lot of people around the area. And so the community is really close and really big in the Southern California, LA area. Now they have their own shop in Pasadena, which I'll be going today. 
congratulate them on, on the grand opening because their old spot was kind of far away and, and behind. It's nice that they're out in the public and know and trying to build that up. Is adaptive clothing a big thing in the States? Because I live in Australia, so I don't really see that very much here. It's slowly becoming bigger. You know, the fashion industry is however billions in sales and everything. It's, yeah. you know, they're always trying to find like the new way, the new population. But I know just because I've been to many different conferences of accessibility, technology, and my background's in occupational therapy. So it's, there's this growing population of people, you know, that's getting, getting older and it just fit right in, you know. Outside of like those four years when the Olympics get really popular, we see a lot of, you know, people with disabilities. So it looks like the trend is not just of sports, but just everyday wear, which is helps everybody out. It's like inclusion and representation has been really big lately in the U.S. So that was also the push. So combination of a, a big population aging and inclusivity and representation has been like this big push into adaptive fashion. So it's been, it's been nice. It's really good to see and to hear that having clothing that is adapted for people is allowing them to continue to be part of the community and also show who it is that they are. Not you know just a blank canvas or invisible. You are visible, so that's great. And there's people just like uh, Stephanie Thomas. She was really big in the forefront of disability and fashion. And then there's like Mindy from Gamut. They've been really loud, and then getting the ball started too. Because even when I first. I didn't even know about like adaptive fashion. I mean, as an OT background, we're just always trying to find ways to adapt the people or find new ways. Because in our head, as a healthcare professional, we don't have a sewing background. But how do we make this fit or like make Yeah. What should we should wear looser clothes, this and that. It wasn't even until the idea from Mindy Shire and um, Stephanie Thomas are like, oh, like we could look as great as everyone. We should have the access to it. I'm like, oh, yeah. And then looking at from there till now, like, oh, the clothes that I would choose, but what I was wearing was very limited to what I could do. So even with when I took my clothes to Sewn Adaptive, bring in everything and everything like you wanted to wear, but you don't wear as much. So like, oh, yeah, unconsciously, I'm choosing T-shirts over button-ups not knowing it was because of that. So I've been like, I brought in my button ups and now like I wear it more. I'm like, oh, mix. Like, yeah, subconsciously, it's, like, it's always been in my head. Like, it's just harder to wear. So I stopped wearing it. And I was like, oh, like, oh, okay, I should change some stuff. And also his background and both Alex and Lynn, there's like, oh, like, let's make it fit for you. I'm like, oh, I didn't even know this wasn't even fit for me because, you know, the sizing is so, just so different when you just buy it off the rack. Yeah, it is. So what's the process like for you? You you find something in your wardrobe that you want to wear more? I think though, even from when I, the way I organize it, it's kind of top down. So when I look, it's like the main pieces would be like my sweaters, my pants are up on top, my shirts and my socks and everything underneath. So kind of my biggest pieces to smallest, I think is, is how I look at it. And yeah. then with my disability is very like how the weather is, that's going to affect what I wear because uh, my body just heats up really quickly. So it's mm -hmm. like I try to find lighter fabric, but right now it's kind of cold. California cold. It's Los Angeles cold. It's about like 50, so it's like 60s, which isn't cold for most other places. So it's very like, okay, what's the comfortability that I, I want to go for? Because I just want to be comfortable in wherever I'm at. If I do have to dress up a little, it's like, well, I'm going to pick a more like breathable fabric, more stretchy fabric. I just want to be as comfortable as I am just because I have to still deal with my body on an everyday basis. Even on those good days, my disability is like, nope, you forget. I'm not the one running the show. <laughs> So I was just like, okay, let's just keep myself as comfortable as possible. Yeah. And I think for a while I, I wasn't. And I was like, oh, like the th things I'm wearing, like I should wear more things like more stretchy or just softer. And I was like, oh yeah, why aren't I? So as, I, as I'm picking and choosing, it's very just like I'm touching fabrics when I'm buying it. Or I was like, oh, today, like it's a little colder. I'll go for a more heavyweight t-shirt than the lighter t-shirt. I'm going to layer up. So I'll layer up like light stuff so I could take it off very easily. And also, if I'm, I'm going to have my backpack around, I was in a place where I could put my jacket because that would also just kind of change things the way I wear. I've been walking around more on my cane. I only have one hand open to carry things, but it's my bad hand or my bad side. Yeah, uh, it's like well, for if I'm gonna carry something around, it's gotta be kind of easy to take around, not too heavy, or I'm gonna take a backpack. So, but this is all like going in my head like really quickly. It's like I'm stopping and kind of thinking, it's like, oh, what what am I doing today? Yeah. 
what stuff do I got to take? Uh, is my car closer off? I got to take it off and leave it in there. So it's just kind of boom, boom, boom. It's just like a checklist. Now I have in my head kind of get me out the door as fast as I can. Yeah, because you've got a life to live and you've got a job to do, a home life to continue to be part of. And so, yeah, it makes it easier for you to be able to do those things if you've got clothes that are adapted to you. Yes, especially it's been lately, it's been a lot of like just go, 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 go. So it's like, it's just something that I could just wear across any setting if I'm at work or at home, just everything in between. So what's the latest piece that you'll be taking in to Alex and Lynn to adapt for you? I went to New York about a month and a half ago. And during that time, I saw that it was cold. So I was like, oh, that, this is an East Coast cold, which is like totally, it's like a real cold. Yeah. So I bought a thicker jacket. As so I was wearing it, I'm like, oh, it's kind of heavy to take it around on me. So I actually asked Alex, I saw this piece, piece of fashion, the jacket that a friend's company had, and it was a jacket. And then on the inside, it had these straps so you could like wear it like a backpack or kind of like you could just fling it over. And I showed him pictures like, is this possible? Because I would still like my hand free because it's a really heavy coat, but, like some way. And he's like, oh, yeah, that sounds kind of cool. We'll try it out. Do that. I recently bought a thicker long sleeve shirt just for the wintertime, like a flannel. The buttons on the from like my neck down were okay. I just wanted the neck up. Especially that last button of the shirt is always the hardest. And I just wanted to get that done. The other times he's a bit adaptive all the buttons, but I realized he doesn't do that. It's just like the last part where I can't see. Mm -hmm. You just gotta feel it. Those are the pieces today, the winter stuff. Okay. The way that they do it, they're on a different level of expertise because I think that oh, they're just gonna do a magnet, but one of them was just a they call it hook and loop. Yeah. So the hook and loop. Hook and loop. They'll look at the fabric, the weight, how it looks and where it stands. And then they make the decisions because they're the ones, they're, they're the pros at that. Depending on if it's a lighter fabric or a heavier fabric, they'll go for a magnet over the hook and loop too. So oh, okay. I just ask them what, how often I'm wearing it. Like, and they, I'll try it on and they'll see. They'll kind of go through like, oh, like try putting it on and we'll see what's the issue. And then they'll use their best decision. So that's up to, it's all on them. It sounds like they work really closely with you to figure out what the best solution is for your needs. Yes. It's funny because coming from the healthcare background, they're doing the same processes as we were, as we're seeing a, a client for therapy. Their own like there's a skills check, there's an occupational, you know, it's like that checklist. We're all going in the same thing of just trying to make a person's life easier. Kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, it is cool. And it's really great that you can see from your background that they go through similar checklists to make sure that what solution they come up with fits your needs. Should we talk a little bit about Runway of Dreams and what that's been like? Oh, yeah. I was part of First Runway of Dreams in 2019. That was just like when everything was kind of blowing up within the adaptive inclusive space. I've been following them. So prior to my switch over to like the modeling and kind of, I guess, myself as an advocate, social influencer, I was running a blog for the disability space. When I got my accident in like 2003, I was like looking around for resources and there wasn't that many, just like there was like these established organizations within the community. For me, it was like they're utilizing the internet as the biggest way to broadcast themselves very just like within their spaces. Like, oh, you go to this person for that. You go to this person for that. As I was like finishing up my own uh, for occupational therapy uh, license, I was like, oh, like, why don't we blog about it more? That was like, there was no one in that space. So I just closed my blog down about two years ago, but I was like, oh, look, I've been out in the community. These are things that we should just share. So I created my own blog. Anything in the internet that popped up or like these new organizations with the event spaces. So as I was like tagging it and just sharing it and just seeing what popped up, I saw like uh, Runway of Dreams and Zappos Adaptive. You know, I kept a close eye just with social media. That was like, that's when the community started to get growing bigger and bigger. And that's when they're like, oh, like we're putting on our first show. We're looking for people. And I was very lucky to be chosen because there was a lot of people that submitted. And I've never done anything like that before. It's funny because my friends, I have a lot of friends that do the modeling and the entertainment space. And I was like, hey, look, I tried out for this. Like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, yeah, I can see you doing that. It's like, oh, cool. I never thought of doing it. I have never let my disability stop me. I just kind of like, oh, I'll say yes and I'll figure out what, what happens next. So I did it. I got picked and 
I was, I was like, oh, this is, uh, this is real. So when I got there, and it was just a lot of people. Oh, there's a lot of people that I've seen in, in the disability community, our celebrities, uh, people we've seen, and they're there as well as just regular everyday people. And it was like a nice mixture of everything. And they were so professional. It just made everyone feel so comfortable, which made me just open up in my shell and just, just kind of, you know, talk to everybody and just hang out. It was like a good hangout, people. And even with the walking down the runway, they're just like, just be yourself. Don't try to be so stuff. This is like fun. This is for you guys. So, because when I always looked at runway shows, it's very poised or it just, it, it just seemed like they had a look. And this was about showing ourselves to the fullest, just having fun. And that was great. So, even with the other jobs that they got me through, a runway of dreams it was just like they just they're like yeah just be yourself even with this last current one in LA and when they choose people it's like regional when they come to LA they're like oh we already knew we wanted to have you so I was like oh that's great I'm glad that I'm in your the good group of people that you guys want they messaged me out and I was available or I made time and they say yeah just do what you do just have fun on stage but that, that was kind of cool to be close with them and on my end, where the beginning, it was kind of just, I'm just doing this for fun because I'm doing getting more opportunities and sharing myself. It was beyond me where people are, oh, those are cool things that other people could see you and kids could see you. And like, you know, especially, you know, showing off my Asian heritage, that's been a kind of cool on my end too. So you've been able to have fun being part of the runway of dreams and also continue to be an advocate in your space too. Yeah, there are way more better advocates and they're like they're like people that are like really in the space, but it's kind of just doing it my own way and yeah. kind of just being it rather than always like being on the other side of the advocacy, just kind of just, just showing up and just doing it kind of always been my thing. I'm never the, the one in the front. That was a, my type of style or personality, I guess. I'm like, I'll do it in the back or like, oh, you're doing it. That's great. I'm like, cool, cool. I'm glad that's helping you to understand or like you're making you want to do it. Just, I'll just do it and then I'll share what I'm doing it. And they're like, oh, that's great. I'm like, cool. That's good. And that one opportunity that you put your hand up for in 2019 has led to so many other opportunities now. The best part about it is just connecting with people and making friendships out of it, especially in a space like this where it's all different types of uh, disabilities. So that, that's been kind of that's fun. And I get to see them at other gigs or just around. It's like a small community. Yeah. Congratulations for putting your hand up and continuing on and being such a positive advocate for people. Thank you. Thank you. I know it's usually that first step where we didn't know that. I was like, oh, it'll lead to so much, but we just had to take that first step. Any words of encouragement before we finish up? Just be yourself. No, no need to hide it and act like something else you're not. Just be as your most authentic self. If there are listeners out there, you know, if they live in the area and they want to have clothes adapted, what pointers would you give them when they're getting their gear ready to go to Sewn Adaptive to get it tailored for them? I would ask if there's any piece of clothing that you haven't worn but you want to. Mm -hmm. and re-look at it of why you haven't worn it and if making it easier to wear would make you want to wear it because there's you know there's always pieces that we have in our closet where it's very like oh like that's my favorite piece but I don't wear it a lot why not it was it easier to wear would you wear it more mm. even just like wanting to get some things tailored and when you meet up with them they're just great at like asking the right questions I think those are the biggest things your favorite pieces I'll just start off with your favorite pieces what you wear and then bring something similar to it that you want to wear more of TJ now that we know more about you what's the best way that people can contact you directly uh, right now let's see on social media I'm on Instagram at TJ Lee T-E-J-Y-L-E-E -E -E. and that will link you to on my profile there's like a link of my email contact information a lot of the videos that i've done are all kind of on. so my main will be social media and then on there we'll link you to my email and all my other i try to contact me anyone's feel they could feel free to contact me anytime open to the community or anyone outside and what have you got planned for 2023 things i got planned i got some travels that i wanted to do just to meet friends of being able to create friendships throughout the u.s and even internationally so it's Go see some more friends. Athletically, there is a stair race in Korea that I want to do. I've been solely back on my athletic training. Yeah. So for like sparn races, stair races, the untraditional sports. Trying to get more bookings. That's always fun. I work with dancers right now. Break dancers 
they're going to be in the Olympics 2024. So helping out the dancers in the U.S. circuit. And you help them out from an occupational therapy point of view. Yes. And so we do like rehab training, education. On the athletic sense, there's a lot that's missing. There's not that many resources in the space. So I'm one of the people that give access. And there's a lot of resources they lack, I think, in the dancing space. In the first week of January, I'll be attending the consumer electronics conventions called CES, meeting with people, seeing what's going on in accessibility and adaptive technology. I still work with kids for my normal weekly job, so I'll still be doing that as well, too. You're very busy. <laughs> hey, hey. But you're busy from a point of view of your own strengths and also helping the community. So that's wonderful. It's just things I've always been interested in. So it's just funny as a kid, I like technology, I like dancing. And it's just bringing all that to like try to make it this ecosystem where I could just live off of. It's nice. TJ, thank you for coming onto the podcast today to talk about where you're at with what you're doing in an advocacy space, but also letting people know the good work that Lynn and Alex are doing at Sane Adaptive and how to approach taking something that they really love to get it adapted for themselves. Oh, no, thank you for having me. I always like this opportunity to share and talk. Uh, yeah, it's been fun, especially the past couple of years, just to being able to share what my experience and knowledge is. Thank you so much for having me. I wish you all the best for 2023. Thank you so much. Lovely to meet you. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. This episode of Sober 50 Podcast on Soul Organized Style was produced by me, Maria Thea Harris, with permission of TJ, sound by bensound.com. Listeners, if you want to provide a guest post for Sober 50, make sure you direct message Judith and Sandy at Sober 50 on Instagram. Also, if you're interested in being part of So 50 Live with Bird and Molly for So 50, contact them directly to be part of this interactive community event. Remember that So 50 Live can still be watched on the So 50 account if you miss them when they're actually live on Instagram. You can subscribe to So Organized Style Podcast, but with an S, not a Z, on all good podcast apps. If YouTube is your thing, a library of Soul Organized Style podcasts are being loaded onto YouTube account with a few visuals to really show you what we're chatting about. Make sure you go back and listen to our free Sober 50 podcast archive. And if you can, consider supporting the production of this podcast on Patreon. We look forward to joining you in your sewing room next time. Stay safe, everyone.